Hello, I'm Dr. Carolina Robert Santana, and I am presenting Interprofessional Education and Collaborative Practice Core Competencies, um, the content for your week two class. Um, I apologize, I am delayed with this, but um, I think you're going to enjoy a little bit the presentation because I was able to use your discussions to um, be able to um, look at some real world um, insights based on your thoughts and opinions. All right, so um, today we're going to dive into the IPEC competencies. We'll review the four domains, values and ethics, roles and responsibilities, communication and team work. Um, we're also going to explore the 2023 updates and see how these competencies apply in real health care scenarios by going through your discussions. And because this is recorded, you can leave your feedback in the YouTube channel comment section or feel free to send me a message if you have any thoughts. So let's take a closer look at the evolution of interprofessional education and healthcare education. Um, it's important to look at the key aspects such as integration and healthcare discipline, how it's accredited, the impact of patient-centered care, discipline-specific efforts that have happened across the years, evolution to a unified approach, and crafting core competencies. As we've discussed these two weeks, at the heart of IPE is the idea that different healthcare fields, such as nursing, medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, and public health, started working closely together. They wanted to ensure that students from these fields could collaborate effectively. Over time, the organizations responsible for overseeing healthcare education recognized the importance of IPE. They began supporting it because they realized that it was crucial for improving patient care. IPE isn't just about making healthcare better for patients. It's like a puzzle where each piece, each healthcare discipline, fits together to give patients the best care possible. In the early stages, each healthcare field made individual efforts to include IPE in their educational programs. They saw the potential benefits and wanted to make sure that their students were prepared for collaborative work. However, when time um, moved and as time went on, they realized that working together as a team was more effective. This shift towards a unified approach was a significant step because it meant all healthcare fields were on the same page. All right, so let's explore interprofessionality. This concept goes beyond just working together. It's about continuous flow of ideas and teamwork, all aimed at better patient care. It encourages us to shift how we think about our roles, emphasizing that our joint efforts can achieve more than working alone. It was defined as the process by which professionals work together to provide integrated and cohesive solutions to meet the needs of patients, families, and communities. It involves continuous interaction and knowledge sharing among professionals and while optimizing patient participation. Embracing interprofessionality requires a significant shift in values, codes of conduct, and ways of working. The concept of interprofessionality became fundamental in identifying mutually agreed upon core interprofessional competency domains and their specific competencies. However, to effectively deliver this essential content, a framework was necessary. Interesting, we found three frameworks developed by the different authors, including the World Health Organization. These frameworks help us understand the interdependency between the healthcare professions, educational competency development, and the actual needs of healthcare practice. The creators of these frameworks recognize that interprofessional education as a powerful means of enhancing patient center and community population oriented care. This highlights the critical role of IPE in improving healthcare practice. Now let's explore how the concept of interprofessional competency frameworks took shape and evolved. It all began with the pioneering work of Barr in 1998. In 1998, Barr proposed the idea of an interprofessional competency framework. He aimed to distinguish between types of competence from an interprofessional perspective. 
This framework aims to define competencies in three categories, common, complementary, and collaborative competencies. We'll focus on common and complementary competencies here and discuss collaborative competencies in the next slide. Common competencies are those that are expected of all healthcare professionals, regardless of their specific discipline. These are skills or knowledge areas shared by more than one profession, although not necessarily all. For instance, administering immunizations could be considered a common competency shared by nurses, physicians, physician assistants, pharmacists, and others. Complementary competencies, on the other hand, are unique competencies that distinguish one profession from another. For example, caring for a patient who has had a stroke involves various professionals with complementary competencies, such as physicians, dietitians, speech therapists, and nurses, um, each contributing their specialized skills to provide comprehensive care. As we continue our journey through the evolution of interprofessional competency frameworks, we reach the concept of interprofessional collaborative competencies. Interprofessional collaborative competencies are those in which each profession needs to work together with others. These competencies extend beyond the boundaries of a single profession and involve collaboration with different specialties, patients, families, non-professionals, volunteers, organizations, communities, and even policy level interactions. The development and recognition of these interprofessional collaborative competencies signify a significant shift towards a more collaborative and patient-centered approach in healthcare education and practice. As mentioned before, the groundwork laid by Barr in 1998, coupled with subsequent efforts and acknowledgments, such as those by the Interprofessional Education Collaborative in 2011, has led to the establishment of comprehensive interprofessional competency frameworks, fostering a more integrated and effective approach to healthcare education and practice. As we've seen, IPEC's journey began in 2009 with a focus on collaborative healthcare education. Their 2011 core competencies set a new interprofessional standard. Over the years, IPEC has continuously evolved, adapting its strategies and competencies in response to changing healthcare needs. This includes faculty development programs in 2012, expanding membership in 2015, and revising competencies in 2016 with a new emphasis on population health. With the challenges of COVID-19, IPEC remained dynamic, leading to the latest revision in 2023. Today, we'll be reviewing these 2023 competencies, understanding their significance in current healthcare landscape. So the 2023 IPEC core competencies are not just guidelines. They're your roadmap to becoming exceptional healthcare professionals or to continue to be. They focus on providing care that's not just top notch, but also equitable and centered around the needs of patients and communities. Think of these competencies as tools that equip you to make a real difference in the healthcare world. During this session, we will do a general overview and then delve into your discussions. All right, let's um, set the stage for what's ahead. At the heart of IPEC, there are four core competencies that form the bedrock of interprofessional collaborative practice. The Interprofessional Education Collaborative has identified four fundamental competencies essential for effective collaboration in healthcare. These competencies are values and ethics, roles and responsibilities, interprofessional communication, or now known as just communication, and teams and teamworks. Each of these areas is crucial for ensuring that you can work effectively in diverse healthcare teams, providing patient-centered care with skill, respect, and integrity. Understanding these competencies is the first step in becoming a well-rounded and collaborative healthcare professional. As current and future healthcare professionals, your first cornerstone competency is values and ethics. This is all about teaming up with your colleagues to create an environment where everyone is committed to ethical conduct, shared values, and mutual respect. It's not just about knowing right from wrong. It's about living these values in every aspect of your healthcare practice. 
before we dive into each specific sub-competency under values and ethics, I want to share with you a framework I've developed to simplify and organize these concepts. We'll be looking at four key categories that group these sub-competencies. Sub this approach is designed to make it easier for you to grasp and remember these important principles. These categories are not just labels. They represent the fundamental aspects of professional ethics and values in healthcare. By understanding these categories, you'll be better equipped to see how these competencies interconnect and how they apply in real world healthcare settings. Let's get started. The first one is patient center advocacy. You'll learn to prioritize the interests and values of patients and communities. This is all about advocating for social justice and ensuring health equity. You're going to be the voice for those who need it most, ensuring everyone has equal access to quality health care. Next up is respect for diversity and individuality. This specific area teaches you to appreciate and respect each person's unique identity and background. You'll focus on maintaining individuals' dignity and privacy while embracing the richness that diverse perspectives bring to healthcare. The next category is professional excellence and empathy. This is where your professional skills meet the human element of healthcare. You'll learn to value the expertise of health professionals, maintain your competence, and practice empathy and respect in all your interactions. This is about blending skill with compassion in your professional journey. Finally, we have ethical collaboration and integrity. This specific area of subcompetencies focus on the ethical aspect of teamwork. Here you'll understand the importance of honesty, integrity, and creating a just, respectful team culture. It's about building a supportive workplace where everyone's contributions are valued and their well-being is prioritized. All right, so let's dive into the heart of our discussion on values and ethics for interprofessional practice. Today, we'll take a closer look at the insightful, insightful contribution from one of your, our peers. Um, her name is Carrie, and as you can see here, she discusses the foundational importance of values and ethics and effective interprofessional collaboration in healthcare. She highlighted um, the significance of having a moral framework. And one of the most important things that she did is she asked a question about what are the most effective strategies in a addressing situations where there is conflict between a patient's religious belief and the recommended medical treatment. Addressing conflicts between a patient's religious belief and medical treatment requires a respectful, empathetic, and culturally sensitive approach. Effective strategies include engaging in open and honest communication with the patient and their family to understand their beliefs and concerns involving cultural mediators or religious counselors when necessary, and seeking an alternative treatment plans that align with the patient's values without compromising medical efficacy. Additionally, healthcare professionals should be trained in cultural competency and ethical decision-making to navigate such situations adeptly. Ensuring that patient care remains respectful, patient-centered, and within the bounds of medical ethic. It's essential to remember that respecting values is a two-way street. Both the patient and all those involved in care, including different professionals, caregivers, and health services, they all need to be aware of and respond to values, taking them into account in diagnosis, management, and follow-up. Thank you, Carrie, for your contribution to values and ethics in interprofessional practice. Now let's talk about roles and responsibilities. This is about understanding not just what you do, but also what your teammate brings to the table. In healthcare, knowing your role and how it fits into the bigger picture is crucial for providing top-notch care. Under roles and responsibilities, we're focusing on how to harness the collective strength of a healthcare team. This part is about more than just knowing about your job. It's about synergizing with everyone's unique skills and expertise. 
You're going to learn the importance of effective collaboration both within your immediate healthcare team and with others outside your usual circle. This helps improve patient outcomes. You'll see how integrating diverse expertise can address a wide range of health needs, considering everything from direct care to broader health determinants. A critical aspect here is understanding and respecting the distinct roles and responsibilities of each team member. It's about knowing how these roles interact and complement each other to provide the best possible care. Also, an essential part of this is practicing cultural humility. This means approaching your team and patient interaction with openness and respect for diverse cultural backgrounds. It's all about creating an inclusive and respectful healthcare environment. So as future healthcare professionals, remember your ability to work effectively with others, understand their roles, and respect cultural diversity will be the key to your success in delivering high quality patient-centered care. All right, so now we're gonna do similar to the previous one, except we had um, more students respond to analyzing roles and responsibility. So we're diving into the heart of our discussion on roles and responsibilities in healthcare teams. We got some valuable insights from our peers and we're here to break them down. So we'll start with Jennifer. Um, Jennifer hits the nail on the head by emphasizing how crucial it is to understand the unique roles and responsibilities in healthcare teams. She's all about recognizing and respecting the skills each professional brings to the table. It's like a well-oiled well machine when everyone knows their part, we're in business. Jennifer's focus is on dentistry, where teamwork can make all the difference. She throws a curveball with her question, and um, her question is, in dentistry, what situation could have benefited from IPC? It's all about teamwork. That's my answer to Jennifer. Um, think about the complex cases like oral cancer where oncologists, dentists, and others need to work in harmony. But it's not just about fixing teeth and managing chronic conditions like diabetes. Teamwork between dentists, primary care physicians, and endocrinologists is the name of the game. The lesson here, different pros, one goal. Additionally, educating patients on the interrelation between oral health and systemic disease can benefit from a collaborative approach where different professionals reinforce the same health messages. So thank you, Jennifer, for your insight. So now Brian steps in. Um, he's all about clear definitions and healthcare teams. He's talking about roles, roles, roles. Having everyone on the same page prevents mix-ups and keeps, us, keeps our patients safe and sound. Brian also gets into the nitty gritty of the healthcare hierarchy and how we can all respect one another. He asked, how can we promote equal respect for people who are traditionally lower on the healthcare hierarchy? My answer is it's like a balancing act. Um, we, wanna, and we wanna make sure that everyone feels valued, but we don't want anyone getting defensive. So what do we do? Um, change the culture. Brian, your question about promoting equal respect for individuals traditionally lower on the healthcare hierarchy is spot on. Changing the culture involves a multifaceted approach. It begins with implementing policies and practices within healthcare institutions that actively value and recognize the contribution of all staff regardless of their position. To level the playing field, fostering an environment of inclusivity and mutual respect is essential. Leadership training and development programs can help senior staff appreciate the value of contributions from every team member. These programs can break down hierarchical barriers, promoting a culture of collaboration and mutual respect. Regular interprofessional education and engaging in team building exercises are vital steps. So this is something you can definitely consider for your project. Um, this type of education helps dismantle preconceived notions and stereotypes, promoting understanding and appreciation of different roles within the healthcare team. So 
So thank you so much, Brian, for your contribution. And let's work on changing that culture. Now let's look at Jeremy, who adds his two cents. Jeremy brings a practical twist to the discussion. He wants to know if we should have roles that don't overlap or if everyone should be a jack of all trades. It's like figuring out if you want a Swiss army knife or a well-organized toolbox. He asks, in, collaborate, in collaborative tasks, is it better to have clearly defined roles that do not overlap or a set of tasks and skills that all members could theoretically perform. What's your take on this? My answer is find that sweet spot. Clear roles, but some overlap for flexibility. Jeremy, your question about clearly defined roles versus overlap and collaborative tasks is crucial. Clearly defined roles are essential for efficiency and reducing duplication. However, some degree of role overlap can offer flexibility. Striking a balance is key. Roles should be clear, but team members should also be cross-trained for adaptability. Simplifying communication and understanding each other's roles are vital for effective teamwork in complex healthcare settings. Thank you for your contribution, Jeremy. Lastly, we have Tiffany who rounds it all up. Um, Tiffany talks about maternity care um, and the importance of clar clarity and role as she reminds us that um, knowing who does what is essential for seamless teamwork. She poses the following question. How might a lack of clarity negatively impact the health of mother and baby? My answer is clarity saves lives. Make sure everyone knows their part. Tiffany, as you alluded in your discussion, a lack of clarity in roles and responsibilities in maternity care can lead to significant adverse effects on both mother and baby. It can result in gaps in care where um, important health issues are overlooked or there is duplicated efforts, where the same aspect of care is addressed by multiple professionals without coordination. This can cause confusion, delays in treatment, and potential harm. This is very relevant specifically for um, women of color who end up having um, higher rates of maternal and infant mortality. So thank you for that question and for your insight um, in the roles and responsibilities of interprofessional practice. So now let's focus on communication, which is a key pillar in healthcare teamwork. Effective communication is not just about talking, it's about making sure your message is clear, respectful, and understood by everyone in the team. First off, it's crucial to communicate your roles and responsibilities clearly, which we already discussed. This isn't just for clarity. It's about setting the stage for how you'll work together with your team. You'll also learn to use various communication tools, techniques, and technologies. These aren't just fancy gadgets. They're vital in enhancing team function, well-being, and ultimately patients' health outcomes. Communication must be clear and authentic. And this includes being mindful of cultural differences and avoiding jargon that might confuse others. It's about being genuine and respectful in every interaction. A big part of communication is promoting a common understanding of shared goals. It's like being a robot. If everyone understands where you're going, you'll get there faster and more efficiently. Active listening is another critical skill. This means really hearing out the ideas and opinions of your team members. It's not just waiting for your turn to speak. It's about genuinely understanding their perspective. Constructive feedback is a game changer. It's not about pointing fingers, it's about connecting with your team, aligning your efforts, and achieving your goals together. Lastly, I want you to think about examining your own position, power, and unique experiences. Understanding these can greatly improve how you communicate and manage conflicts within the team. As we delve deeper into our session on the core competencies of communication, let's unpack the rich perspective our peers have shared. 
Their insights are not just academic exercises. They're real-world reflections of the challenges and solutions in healthcare communication. We'll start out with Layla's insights. Layla's focus on healthcare data analysts highlights a critical junction in our field where data meets decision-making. It's not enough to have accurate data. The real skill lies in translating this data into a language that's clear to everyone, from clinicians to administrators. This skill is a cornerstone in our roles, bridging gaps in understanding and ensuring that decisions are made on a well-informed basis. It's about turning numbers into narratives that guide patient care and policy. Leila asks, what's the importance of IBE core competency in your role? For me specific as a healthcare administrator, I think you're spot on. Interprofessional communication is key in healthcare administration as we interact with different professionals on a daily basis. Effective communication, especially interprofessional, is not just a nice to have, it's a must have. We're in the business of making complex data not just accessible, but meaningful. It's about translating data into decisions and actions. Thank you, Leila, for your insight. Let's review Catherine's perspective. Catherine's discussion about the various forms of communication, including the often overlooked nonverbal aspects, is a powerful reminder of the complexity of our interactions. In the high stakes environment of healthcare, every gesture, every word, and every written note carries weight. Miscommunication isn't just a minor mishap, it can have dire consequences. Her point about historical incidents in other fields serves as a cautionary tale, urging us to be vigilant and comprehensive in our communication practices. Catherine asks, um, what tools can improve patient handoff communication? In response to your question about tools for patient handoff, I emphasize the importance of structured methods like SBAR. These aren't just tools, they're lifelines in the busy world of healthcare, ensuring that patient information is passed on accurately and effectively. It's about avoiding the pitfalls of miscommunication that can lead to serious healthcare errors. Thank you, Catherine, for your perspective. Now let's discuss Cindy's contributions. I have Cindy O because we have a Cindy R too. Cindy O um, brings to light the barriers that often hinder effective communication within our teams. Her point about hierarchical structures resonate deeply. In an environment where critical decisions are made daily, every voice needs to be heard, respected, and integrated. This calls for a cultural shift moving away from top-down communication to a more inclusive dialogue where diverse perspectives are valued. Cindy's concern about barriers in team communication hits a crucial point. There are cultural nuances and varying communication styles that can create significant obstacles. It's about breaking down these walls and fostering a space where everyone feels comfortable and confident in sharing their insights. Clear, open communication is not just beneficial, it's essential for patient safety and team effectiveness. Thank you for your question and your contribution, Cindy. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Abiola's observations. Um, she emphasized on regular and structured communication within healthcare teams on and how it underlines a proactive approach to avoid misunderstanding. The implementation of training programs that focus on active listening um, and empathy is not just about improving soft skills, it's about creating a culture of mutual respect and understanding. Such an environment not only enhances patient care, but also strengthens the team, making it more cohesive and aligned in its goals. Her focus on improving team communication is a reminder that good communication is the backbone of any strong team. She asked about what um, type of strategies or experiences I found most effective in enhancing communication within healthcare teams. My response is regular structure interactions and a focus on skills like active listening and empathy don't just enhance team dynamic, they directly impact patient care 
This approach leads to a more cohesive team where every member feels valued and understood. Thank you for your contribution and your observations. Lastly, we're gonna talk about Cindy R's analysis. Um, Cindy R's insights into the tools provided by organizations for improving communication shed light on the tangible steps being taken to address this issue. It's encouraging to see a shift um, towards acknowledging communication as a skill that can and should be developed. These tools are not just beneficial for patient outcome, but are also instrumental in personal and professional development. Cindy asked about um, specific tools that are offered to improve communication. Um, one organization tool for communication, um, I spoke about the importance of continuous learning and development in communication skills. Whether it's through workshops, digital tools, or personal development programs, these resources play a crucial role in sharpening our communication abilities, thereby enhancing leadership effectiveness and improving patient care. Um, it's important to highlight that the art of communication in healthcare is multidimensional and dynamic. It's a skill that demands constant attention and improvement. As we continue to grow in our respective roles, let's keep these insights at the forefront, remembering that our ability to communicate effectively is as vital as any clinical skill we possess. All right, now let's explore the essence of teamwork and healthcare, focusing on how we as future healthcare leaders and currently in our jobs can adapt our roles within diverse team settings to optimize patient care. Similarly to roles and responsibilities, um, I took upon myself to divide these, um, the sub competencies into four specific categories. The first one is team dynamics and development. And we're gonna begin by looking at the fabric that holds team together the development process and the practices that keep a team effective. Remember the journey from a group of strangers to a cohesive team isn't just about time. It's a transformation backed by evidence-informed processes such as Tuckman stages of team development. Reflecting on pers both personal and team performance is not just a good practice, it's essential for growth. It's like looking into a mirror. You need to see both your triumphs and your mistakes to improve. Operating from a shared framework isn't just a fancy term. It's about creating a safety net that catches us all, ensuring resilience, well-being, and efficacy are not just words, but actions we live by. The next category includes two competency um, diversity and shared understanding. When we talk about diversity, it's not just about um, checking off boxes. It's about valuing the rich tapestry of experiences, cultures, and expertise that each team member brings to the table. This diversity is the powerhouse of innovation and improved functions in our team. Coordination in a team is like conducting an orchestra. Every instrument has a role, and when played in harmony, the result is beautiful, safe, and effective care for our patients. Next category is decision-making and leadership. Moving on to core of problem-solving and decision-making, these aren't solo activities. Team reasoning is a collective effort where we pull our knowledge to make better decisions. Shared leadership is the key here. It's less about taking charge and more about empowering each member to lead in their area of expertise. Accountability is not a solo burden, but a shared commitment where we succeed. We succeed together, and when we fall short, we look where we can improve as a unit. The last topic is conflict management and organizational context. Conflict is inevitable and it doesn't have to be destructive. Applying interprofessional conflict management methods means you're not just putting out fires, we're preventing them from starting. Lastly, let's talk about the bigger picture, the organizational context, policies, structures, 
and resources can either be stepping stones or stumbling blocks for our teams. Understanding and navigating these effectively is a crucial part of our roles. All right, we're in the last section. I'm gonna decode team and teamwork according to your peers' discussions. And so we're gonna look at the vital role of teamwork in healthcare. I'm gonna draw from the insights from Lindsay, Jonathan, and Catherine. Their, their perspectives offer us a well-rounded understanding of how teamwork operates as a core competency in various healthcare settings. Lindsay's analysis or Lindsay's contribution emphasizes the importance of a shared mission and accountability within lab teams. She points out that successful teams are more than just groups of people, they're units with common goals. This is particularly crucial in labs where teamwork directly impacts patient outcome. In response to her question, which is, do you agree or disagree that teamwork is the most important core competency in clinical laboratory? I agree. Um, however, I wanna remind everyone as we've learned throughout this module that all the core competencies are interrelated. So although I reaffirm that teamwork indeed stands as a critical competency in clinical laboratories, harmonizing individual skills for collective um, efficacy, it's always important to make sure that we are also drawing from ethics and values, roles and responsibilities, and communication. Let's look at Jonathan's insights. Jonathan's experience highlights the significance of teamwork and interprofessional collaboration especially in challenging environments like medical missions. His reflection reminds us that addressing an ineffective team requires a comprehensive approach. It's about identifying issues, fostering open communication, setting clear objectives, and the crucial role of leadership. This approach not only resolves current problems, but also strengthens the team for future challenges. Thank you for your insight, Jonathan. And lastly, we're going to discuss on um, Catherine's evaluation. So Catherine focuses on the critical nature of decision-making in high-stakes situations, such as emergency departments. She underscores the need for training in data analytics and informatics to enhance decision-making capabilities. Her question was, um, what strategies can healthcare system implement to effectively improve decision-making skills among professionals in high-pressure settings like emergency rooms and during public health emergencies? Um, I suggest a team-based approach, emphasizing simulation and training and the integration of data-driven insights. I remember right before COVID, we actually did a simulated event where we, you know, there was this virus that was coming to the US and we needed to make sure we had all of our resources in place. This um, does not only enhance individual skills, but also strengthens the team's collective decision-making capacity. All right, so as we look at um, the nuances of teamwork, let's appreciate its complexity and its indispensable role in healthcare. It's clear that effective teamwork transcends more mere collaboration. It's about creating a cohesive unit that is efficient, empathetic, and prepared to face the challenges of healthcare delivery. Thank you for your continued engagement and your thoughtful contributions to this crucial discussion. All right, so as we conclude our discussion on the core competencies of interprofessional collaboration, it's important to reflect on how these competencies interplay to create a cohesive and effective healthcare environment. The values and ethics competency is the bedrock of our practice. It's about maintaining integrity and respect for each, each individual's dignity and rights. In healthcare, where ethical dilemmas are common, adhering to these values ensures that we make decisions that are not only clinically sound, but also morally justifiable. Understanding and respecting each other's roles and responsibilities is crucial for smooth operation. It's like knowing the pieces of a puzzle and how they fit together. This understanding avoids duplication of efforts and ensures that each patient receives comprehensive care. Effective communication, it's like the bloodstream of healthcare teamwork. It ensures that information is shared accurately and timely, which is essential for patient safety and effective care. 
Poor communication can lead to errors, so honing this skill is vital for all healthcare professionals. The sum is indeed greater than its parts when it comes to teams and teamwork. By bringing together diverse, diverse expertise and perspectives, we can provide holistic care to our patients. Teamwork is not just about working side by side, it's about working together towards a common goal, the well-being of our patients. These core competencies are not standalone concepts, I've said this multiple times, but are deeply interconnected. They work in tandem to enhance the quality of healthcare delivery. As we move forward, let's keep these competencies at the forefront of our practice, ensuring that we provide the best possible care to those we serve. Thank you for your commitment to these principles and for your continuous effort to improve interprofessional collaboration in healthcare. All right, before we end, before I end this um, presentation, I want to make sure that I, I go over assignment one, which is due at the end of week three. The goal of this assignment is for you to put together a personal reflection, analysis of core competency, and a theoretical framework proposal. I will be discussing this again on Monday during our live session but I wanna make sure that you have the information needed to move this assignment forward. Think about your personal reflection as something, um, you know, sort of like building the groundwork for your understanding and application of IP in healthcare. And so I wanna make sure um, that you consider your past experiences or you can draw from your journals, think about the roles and interactions of different healthcare professionals and how they come together to provide patient care. When you think about the analysis of the core competencies, is essentially what we talked about this week in part of this presentation. Um, when we move on to the sources, um, I, you can definitely draw from five books that you have access to in your um, library. And then thinking about the theoretical framework, that's going to be the discussion for week three. And we'll definitely be able to draw from the theories and models we're going to discuss on Monday. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions about um, your final, your assignment one. Your other references, um, as you can see, um, five of these sources are in eBook Central, which, are, which is the um, free library that you can access your books, and then also um, an online site for the iPad Collaborative. Thank you for so much for your attention. Here's my email. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Also, um, we will be, if you have any questions, you can leave them on the YouTube channel or we can always discuss on our Monday class. I'm available through email or any other method um, that's addressed in the syllabus. Wishing you a great week.